Hello, I'm Megan Remark, President and CEO of Regents Hospital. I want to thank you for choosing your care with us. We are committed here at Regents Hospital to providing you an exceptional experience in a safe and healing environment. And I want you to know that you are in such excellent hands. Our highly skilled teams are consistently recognized as leaders in providing the best care possible. This video will explain what to expect from your first clinic visit through recovery. We want to involve you in your care every step of the way. And that's important because healthcare is personal and it's really all about you. Our mission is to improve the health and well-being in partnership with our members, patients, and community. Hi, I'm Jean, one of the nurses here in the surgery department. Welcome, thanks for coming today. Um, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to be checking your bl blood pressure and your pulse, checking your medications. When I'm done with that, the doctor will come in and he'll examine you, he'll talk to you, he'll explain what's, what his plan would be. And once that's done, then we as nurses will come back in to talk to you, review all your pre-op instructions with you. We'll review this, this book and you can take that home with you. I will then take you out to our surgery scheduler who will schedule your surgery. She'll also schedule your pre-op exam with your primary care doctor. The um, nurses from the hospital will call you the day prior to surgery. If you have any questions or concerns, give us a call. Hello, my name is Sandra. I'd always been healthy and proud of the fact that I only needed to go to the doctor once a year for my annual checkup. I never had any type of surgery until I was diagnosed with colon rectal cancer a couple of years ago after a routine checkup. I went through a similar surgery that you'll be going through soon. I remember meeting my surgeon for the first time and him telling me your care team is going to grow and we are here to help you through this process. He was right. My care team grew and grew. I had many different caregivers and various needs throughout this ongoing journey. I remember him saying, keep asking questions when you don't know something, if things don't make sense to me, or you just don't remember, because there are lots of new things that need to be explained and explored. I'm guessing you will go through a lot of different emotions and thoughts just like I did in the coming months. It was a wide range for me from being sad, tired, mad, surprised, but what I didn't want to do was to get stuck in any one of those emotions for an extended period of time. Hello, I'm Dr. Sandra Engwall. I'm a minimally invasive surgeon here at Regions Hospital. The day of surgery is a big day and there's a team here that's going to be working with you. On the day of surgery you'll meet with your surgeon um, and other members of the surgical team so please remember to arrive an hour and a half to two hours before your surgery time. The surgery nurses will review your medical history, assess your physical condition, and prepare you for anesthesia. Additionally, there is a family waiting area. And from the time you say goodbye to family to the time you see them again, it will be approximately six hours. When you arrive at Regions Hospital, you will have several surgical options, laparoscopic, robotic, and open. When your surgery is complete, it's typical to spend one to three hours here in the recovery room. Your temperature, heart rate, blood pressure, and breathing will be monitored here. Katie? Hi. 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 My name is Angela, one of the nurses here in the recovery room, okay? Your surgery's all done. It's um, Wednesday, December 3rd, and it's 7 a.m. And you're just waking up, okay? Are you doing all right? Yeah. Okay. We're going to be checking your blood pressure and your respirations and your um, heart rate every 10 minutes here. Okay. I'm going to be. I'm going to try to get you comfortable and um, we're going to use a pain scale one to ten, with ten being the worst. All right. Do you have any questions about anything? Welcome to the Trauma and Surgical Nursing Unit. Our team of caring and professional nurses, doctors, and ancillary staff will partner with you for a safe, comfortable, and speedy recovery. Hi there, my name is Molly, and I'm going to be your nurse today. Okay, good. I just wanted to talk to you about some of the temporary medical devices that you've noticed are, are on now that you've completed your surgery. Um, the first one you may have noticed is on your face, your supplemental oxygen, which will just help deliver extra oxygen that you may need as you're recovering. 
We'll try to get that off as soon as possible. Um, we'll also be teaching you how to use the incentive spirometer, sometimes called an IS. It's a breathing machine that will help you to take deeper breaths to help prevent complications after surgery. Okay. You also have your IV site here, mm -hmm. which is connected to IV fluids to help keep you hydrated after surgery. Also connected to your IV is your PCA pump, which is Patient Controlled Analgesia Pump. And that's what that button is connected to. So if your surgeon prescribes this pump for you, um, the nurse will set up the parameters on the pump for safety and you'll be allowed to push the button usually around every 10 minutes. Um, we want you to be the only person who pushes that pump. Okay. Okay? Uh, your comfort's very important to us, so let us know if you're getting adequate pain medication. On your legs here are the SCDs, or sequential compression devices. And you may notice those will be squeezing on and off to help prevent blood clots while you're resting in bed. Over here is your urine catheter, which is helping to drain urine from your bladder. As um, you progress, we'll try to get you off of the IV pain medication and onto oral or tablet pain medication. Your comfort is very important to us because we'll want you to get up and get moving as soon as possible on the day of your surgery. Hello, I'm Dr. Ryan Carlson. I'm the minimally invasive colon and rectal surgeon at Regions Hospital. Post-operative day one, your operation is done and the first night is behind you. Your surgeon's work is mostly done, and now your hard work is about to begin. It's time to recover. And nurses at Regents Hospital will tell you, that means it's time to get moving. The days are gone when you're expected to lie in bed for a week after colon surgery. Countless scientific papers and my own experience has clearly shown that walking four times a day leads to a faster, safer recovery after colon surgery. Walking means getting up out of bed and taking one or more laps in the hallway. Walking does amazing things for you after surgery. We know it's not easy, but walking will speed up the recovery of your intestines so you can start eating again. Walking will help keep your lungs open and free of fluid so that you don't come down with pneumonia. Walking will help avoid blood clots. Walking, believe it or not, helps decrease your pain. Yes, walking makes you sore. It may even hurt a bit to walk. But nurses at Regions Hospital will tell you that people who take charge of their own recovery and start walking early and often recover much faster. Diet, or what can I eat, is on everyone's mind after colon surgery. At Regions Hospital, we believe that getting back to a normal diet as soon as possible is very important, but it's also important to listen to your body after surgery. We start most patients on clear liquid plus toast diet after colorectal surgery. Clear liquids means things like juices, Gatorade, coffee, tea, water, popsicles, and even jello. On day two, most people are advanced to a regular diet. That means eating whatever sounds good to you. But listen to your body. Go slow. Eat less than a third of what you normally would eat. And if you feel nauseated or bloated, stop. Take a break and reassess how you're feeling in a few hours. If your doctors or nurses see that your belly is swelling up, or that you're experiencing nausea or excessive belching, they may pause your diet until your intestines resume their normal function. Going home. Knowing when you're ready to go home after surgery is actually very easy. When you're eating regular food, you're recovering well, walking around freely, and your pain is well controlled with simple pills, it's time to continue your recovery outside of the hospital. For most people, this will mean going home. For others, it may mean going to a transitional care center until they are strong enough to confidently return to their daily lives. What a great help he was to me, from pre-surgery to those that helped me once I got on the floor. Complimentary care was amazing and helped me stay relaxed. I highly recommend that you think about using this service, which includes massage and music therapy. What I remember most, now looking back, walk walk, walk. Listen to your body. It talks to us all the time. We just don't listen most of the time. But it's important to really tune in, listen, and respond accordingly. One day at a time. Most people say it, but most people don't really do it. 
it's a great way to get through this, or at least it was for me. You will have good days and bad days, but more good than bad. Remember, walk. Let people help you out. Maybe even ask for help for those of us that don't like to or don't want to ask for it. When possible, have someone go with you to your appointments. They will hear things differently than you to help fill in what you more than likely will miss. Thinking about the first days at home, everything takes longer than you think and sometimes than you would like. Give yourself a break. Do the best you can. Planning for a successful discharge from the hospital is key to a successful recovery. You'll have a follow-up appointment scheduled with your surgeon at the time of your discharge. You may need to follow up with your primary care provider or the surgeon's assistant around 7 to 10 days to remove staples. At the post-operative visit with your surgeon, you can discuss issues like returning to work and bowel function. While at home, you should continue to walk several times a day, slowly increase the distance and the intensity until you're um, back to your normal level of activity. But do not lift more than 20 pounds until at least six weeks after the surgery. You may start to drive when you are no longer taking narcotic medication. Remember to call your doctor if you have any of the following symptoms. Your incisions become warm, red, or you see drainage coming from the incisions. You have a fever greater than 100.4. You can't drink fluids and keep them down. We need you to stay hydrated. If you're having more pain that is not relieved by the medication, that's also a reason to let us know. Prepare your house before coming home. Think about easy to eat food. For the shower area, maybe a chair, a handle so you get out of the tub easier. Have something soft to sit on all the time, riding in the car and at home. I took my seat with me to meetings. The goal is to get back to your life as normal as possible. It will take time, things are different, but doable. As they say, it's a new normal. <music>